column, and therefore they're stacked in a column. We change that to row. We'll put them in a row. We can then specify what to do if it gets too small, if there's a wrap around. So let's give um, let's look at one of these other examples here. Flex wrap. So here in this example there's 12 of these things and the size of the window depends how many of them we see at a time. So when the window is big, we see it at that size. Actually, this one isn't working, but this example is. When the window is big, we see the 12 things lined up 6 and 6. But as the window gets smaller, now there's 4 and 4 and 4. So this is something to use and something to try uh, if you want to for the layout. The idea of it is it's a simpler way to accomplish sort of the same idea as floating without using float. So um, if you want to play with that in the example, it might, might be a good uh, thing to take a shot with and play with. All right, next. So that's the flex and the flex box. The other thing that we have is for new features in CSS and HTML, um, sometimes browsers don't always support them. So it's important to look and see, gee, will my browser, will, will the feature I am thinking of using, will it be supported in many browsers? So there's a cool website for that called Can I Use? And what that does is that allows us to look up by functionality either a CSS element or either a CSS technique or a HTML element and see if we can use it. So for example, can I use flex layout? And as you see, it's supported, supported in the newest versions of most browsers. So Edge, version 12 through 6. Firefox, version 28 and greater. Chrome, version 29 and greater. Safari, 9 and greater. And so on down the line. The red ones are the problem areas. So in Internet Explorer 6 through 9 and Opera 10 through 11.5. And if you look, there are percentages associated with it. So roughly 95% of browsers would support it, all right? Which is pretty, pretty significant amount. Uh, if you know something about your audience and what browsers they use, this is, you can take that into account as well when you're assessing it. The, the, the green green means that it is completely supported. The sort of olive green means that it's kind of supportive, but it might not be fully supported. So we're going, we're going to, uh, in, the, in the upcoming weeks, talk about some other um, CSS features and other HTML features. And this is a good one to keep in mind when you're looking to see what browsers support them. All right. It is important to see what happens if your browser doesn't support it. And the good news is usually browsers ignore stuff that they don't understand. So in other words, if you were to use Flex on an old version of a browser, so let's bring up Internet Explorer. I wonder what version we have here.
Texas Internet Explorer 11. And I think the Flex layout was supported in that. Yeah, it seems to be working in this. But you could see what would happen if the browser didn't support it, if you pull up one of those one browsers. And typically, the good news is if the browser sees something it doesn't understand, it ignores it. So my guess is that the flow layout would take effect if you used the flex layout, and you'd probably have things just stacked vertically. That would be my guess um, if you used it on a browser that didn't support that. Um, so, but can I use is a great tool to use if you're not sure. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is, and I'm covering some of these a little quicker than normally, I apologize for missing class on Monday. Um, the other thing I want to look at is how to make your pages, how to make your pages look different under mobile versus versus um, a desktop environment. And that can be done with what is called uh, CSS media queries. All right. Generally speaking, when you do web pages for mobile, you know, don't use an absolute number of pixels. Use percentages. And use percentages for the size of images and videos and so on. But the other thing you can do is you can apply two style sheets. So let me look at this page. Let me open it up in Chrome. All right, I have a page that looks like this. Again, this isn't meant to be the world's loveliest page. I'm showing some specific techniques here. If I view this in a mobile device, and how can I simulate that? I can go to Developers Tools under Chrome. And I can pick Console. No. <laughs> I can pick Toggle Device Bar. And I can pick there we go, a particular phone. So this is what it would look like on a Nexus, whatever I picked. Or I'm sorry, on a Galaxy S5. So notice this page. Exact same page. Depending on whether you're viewing it in a computer's browser or in a phone, looks different. All right? Generally speaking, um, you want your pages for mobile to look simpler than a desktop uh, design. In fact, you notice uh, that more and more people are going for that mobile look even on desktop browsers. They're, they're kind of getting rid of complicated layouts. The layouts are becoming more simple. And I think mobile has had an influence on that. Um, you want things simpler because obviously the, the mobile screen is smaller than a desktop screen. People interact with it differently. People use their finger to touch instead of a mouse to, uh, to navigate. Multiple columns sometimes can be difficult on a mobile device, so therefore things are typically single column. Um, people use mobile websites differently than they use a desktop site. In other words, if you're using a mobile site, usually you have a very pointed question that you're trying to answer, as opposed to a desktop site where you may be kicking back and exploring a little bit more. All right. Now, there's a number of techniques that you can use to enhance your site for, a mobile, uh, for the mobile experience. Uh, and we cover some of them in CISS 268. Uh, this one, we're just talking about the most basic HTML, CSS thing that you can do, which involves what's called responsive design and the use of media queries.
So let's look at the difference. Let's look at the HTML for this, and we'll see the difference um, and what we've put in to make it mobile compatible. First of all, I put a viewport meta tag at the beginning. I have some code here. I'm actually going to move up here. This code helps compensate for really, really old browsers. This is like ancient browsers. For example, for versions of Internet Explorer prior to uh, version 9 of Internet Explorer, or for old versions of Firefox. For Firefox, the fix is just to have a simple style sheet which simply tells Firefox, hey, these elements, the header, nav, section, article, aside, and footer, treat them like block tags. Because, again, old versions of a browser don't know what those tags mean because the version of the browser was written before those tags were created. So we have to tell those old versions of a browser how to interpret a header, an article, a section, and so on. So here we tell it that it's a block tag. This does the exact same thing, but it does it for IE. <coughs> and this is a little more complicated. This involves JavaScript. And you can literally copy and paste it. This is licensed to be used. So this isn't like a copyright violation to, to, to steal or borrow this code. All right. But what these two things do uh, are both the same, is they make old web, uh, old web browsers be able to handle at least a little bit of HTML5 stuff, the main structural tags. Because if it can do that, then those old browsers will probably display HTML5s OK. So that's what these two sections are. The interesting thing is over here, all right? And this is where we have two different style sheets. Now, a number of the exercises involved you creating two versions of the page, right? I wanted to sort of instill in you the idea that it's possible to take one web page, one set of content, and make it look different ways, all right? You can do that and make pages look wildly different simply by changing the CSS, all right? And we could do that for a number of reasons. Um, you could do that because some websites like to have a seasonal look to them, all right? I worked uh, on a jewelry site um, ages ago, and they wanted, the jewelry site wanted to look, you know, fall Thanksgiving-ish for that time of the year, Christmassy for the Christmas season, Valentine's Day-ish for the Valentine's Day period, Mother's Day-ish for the Mother's Day period, patriotic for the 4th of July, and so on down the line, right? So they wanted their look to sort of change as the seasons went on, all right? Which makes sense for, for a, a merchant, a company that, that is uh, selling goods. Um, Sometimes if you go to a web page, a news site, and you want to print a news article, you bring up the page and it looks different to print than it does to view on the browser. They get rid of stuff and they simplify it. All right. All these things are examples of taking a web page and making it look a lot different depending on the circumstances. All right. So this is a code that we use to apply two different style sheets to a web page. <laughs> and the way it works is this. We have a base style sheet that always appears. So it's possible to apply two different style sheets to one page, all right, at the same time. So this base, everyone gets this base. So whether you're on a desktop browser or a... Um, 
mobile browser, you get this base as your start off, starting off point. This, yeah, go ahead. Is the base Word itself? No, okay. no. The fact that, it, that the fact that everyone gets it is because there's no media query associated with it. All right? So this could have been called anything, right? The reason that everyone gets it is this is what says, well, only some of the people get it. So if that media query isn't included, then everyone gets it. All right? So everyone gets this as a starting off point, and then... This style sheet applies under certain circumstances. And that's what's known as a media query, because you have the word media. In other words, how the page is being displayed. One example of a media query is print. In other words, if it's going to be printed instead of displayed on the screen. What this says is, is if it is displayed on a computer screen that is at least 601 pixels wide, to apply this style sheet. So that's a media query. So a computer screen that's at least 601 pixels wide, well, that's a computer screen, right? I mean, because you're not really going to find any computer screens these days that are less than 600 characters wide, all right? This should be enough. But back in the old days, some phones pretended to be computers, believe it or not. All right, so we had to put in the 601 um, catch in there. So this style sheet applies to desktop devices or laptops. So everyone gets this. Computer screens get this. And the way it works is the base sets up some style rules. And the second one overrules some of the style rules. But again, it's only going to be overruled on a desktop machine. So let's look at base and desktop. The base says that the font family is Helvetica, Arial, Sans Serif that the header is 100% wide and it has a border. The nav's 100% wide. Nav li, display inline. That'll make the list be displayed horizontally. Nav ul, list style type none. Section has a width of 100%, a border, and a solid image. Section image, display none. OK, so that is the mobile version of this. Notice that there's no image on this page because we've hidden that image. We've said any image within a section don't display. Now, the desktop overrules some of these. So we overrule the color of the text. We say, this didn't say anything about the color of the text, right? So the default text is used. So on a mobile version of the page, black text on a white background. Because we didn't say anything about the color of the background or the text. So the color is white. We overruled the font family, all right? The base says make the font family Helvetica Ariel. On the desktop, we said Garamond Serif. So that's why the font is that on this page and that on this page. The background has a URL of this image, this tile. So that's the background for that page. NavLi has a display of block. NavLi had a display of inline. So that overrules it. The links we make have a color of white. The sections we make having a width of 30%, minimum width 200 pixels, float left. And section, section image, we make the display inline, and we make the width 100%. So as we resize this page, 
the image gets smaller. And we're floating, so at a small enough screen, we're down to one column. And that's good, too, for someone with a narrow screen, right? Because might, you might be viewing uh, a page like this. A lot of times, for example, just a practical case, if I'm on Facebook chatting with someone, uh, I might be doing work in this browser window and have a Facebook window open with the chat appearing here. And so therefore, even on a desktop machine, you want some fluidity in the page just so that it can conform to the width of it. But notice again how this works. All right? The base is first. That sets the baseline. That sets the standard that everyone gets. The second style sheet comes and overrules some of the things. All right? And it overrules it because it appears second. All right? If we were to switch these around, we're not going to get the same effect. All right? We don't get the same effect. Why is that? Because, again, it's based on the position. This set the rules, and then this one overruled. Whereas, if it's this way, that's the way that we want it to be. Whereas, this CSS set the rules, and this one overrules. Now, some uh, people ask me a lot of times in class, does it matter the order of the CSS? And this is one case where the order does matter. If you have CSS that covered the exact same thing, then the second one takes precedence over the first one. All right? So in this case, that second one is the one that's overruling the first one. Are fixtures always applied first? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. That's why I moved it. Um, in the first example, in this case, it shouldn't matter. But um, I would think that uh, anything that I deliberately do on this style sheets page, I want to take precedence over the generic fixes. So I'd put those first. Um, in, in this case, practically, it shouldn't matter. All right, but um, I would put those. I would put those first. Again, typically. The Firefox fix and the little snippet of code for Internet Explorer, you can copy that verbatim on every one of your pages. You don't need to, um, you know, it's not a judgment thing. You could put those in every one of your pages and it probably wouldn't hurt. All right. Now, this is what's called progressive enhancement. All right. What does progressive enhancement mean? It means that you start with the simplest scenario, which in this case typically is a mobile device, and then you enhance it for a more involved platform, for a more robust platform. So typically you think of a mobile device as being simpler, a desktop computer as being more involved, more complicated. So you progressively enhance it for, from the baseline, which is the mobile version of the page, then you enhance it for a, a more complicated platform that is a desktop computer. So that's called progressive enhancement. We could actually put several media queries in here if we wanted to and have not two versions but multiple versions. An example of that would be we could have a version for a flip phone. All right, the most bare bones, simple looking web page possible. So if you have a flip phone, you'll get the least CSS of anyone. Then you could upgrade to a smartphone, all right? And a smartphone of certain dimensions would get the second style sheet. Then maybe a big old uh, smartphone would get a third version of it. Then maybe a tablet would get a version of it. Then finally, maybe a desktop computer. All right? So you could put, and these are called breakpoints. <coughs> you could put different breakpoints in so that the more, you know, you don't just have to have two, like I have in this example, where I have mobile 
and then desktop. You could have low-end mobile, mobile, tablet, desktop, simply by setting the media query properly. All right. Generally speaking, if you're developing a website from scratch, this is the technique you want to do. This is called sort of the mobile first design philosophy. And that's sort of a good philosophy to have because it sort of puts your mindset on mobile first, as the name implies. And it also um, points you in the direction of thinking in very simple terms. Simple, straightforward. And as we've learned from talking about web design, where web designs go wrong often is that people try to do too much and it becomes too complicated, too busy, and so on. So therefore, start by thinking of what the mobile is. That sort of forces you to think of the essential. What do people absolutely need on this site and how should it look for someone that's browsing this on a mobile device? And then think of stuff that you want to add on if they're on a desktop machine. All right, so that is using media queries to do um, mobile stuff um, using what's called the progressive enhancement technique. The other method, the other sort of mindset for this is what's called graceful degradation. What that means is, is when you go down to a less robust platform, to a simpler platform, that your page doesn't break. All right? So this starts with a bare bone design, a mobile design, and beefs it up until it's the full version. Graceful degradation starts with the full blown, beefed up website and then takes stuff away for the simpler platform. All right? Um, a lot, of the, a lot of what depends on the approach you'll take will depend on where you're coming from. For example, if I already had a completed site that worked on a desktop machine, and I needed to sort of retrofit it to work on a desktop machine, I would use graceful degradation. I would look at the stuff that I wanted to change as the platform got smaller, all right, less extensive, simpler. If I was doing something from scratch, I probably would use uh, the progressive enhancement. It's sort of like if you were making, um, if you wanted to make peanut M&Ms by hand, right? Let's say there's a peanut M&M shortage, and or well, no, let, let, let's say that you wanted to make, you wanted to provide a variety of snack foods for your friends. So you had, you wanted to provide them peanuts, chocolate covered peanuts and M&M peanuts. All right, so you could take your pe the peanuts and you could take some of the peanuts and cover them in chocolate. And then you could take some of those chocolate covered peanuts and put a candy coating on it and then you'd have peanuts, chocolate covered peanuts, and M&M peanuts. Or you could buy a big bag of M&M peanuts and chip away the candy coating so that you're left with a chocolate covered peanut and then melt away the chocolate so that you're left with just a plain peanut. Which one seems like a better if you have a choice? It seems a better if you have a choice to start with the simple and add on as opposed to starting with the complex and chip away. All right? But that's the second, graceful degradation. And you hear this a lot, the term graceful degradation. Graceful degradation refers to um, what happens when um, you're working in an environment that doesn't do everything that some other environment does. At the very least, your page shouldn't break, all right? And it should be workable. Here's an example of doing just about the same thing, but using graceful degradation. So, I'm going to go here and I'm going to open up Responsive and the page looks like this. This is a desktop version of it. A little different than the other version. 
And I'm going to go and I'm going to view this. I didn't want to do that. I want to open up in Chrome. And here's how it looks like on a Galaxy S5. So again, we have the two versions of the page. Similar, but a little different than the other one I showed. Let's look at the code here. switch those around like I did here. So I have the same fixes that I had before. The Firefox fix. And oops, I messed something up. Here I am at the beginning. All right, so I want to take these and move them up here. And I want to put that up there. There we go. Okay, so I have the same fixes as I had before. I then have two links to different style sheets. One says, this is a responsive one. In fact, I'm going to change the name of this to desktop. This is meant to be the desktop version of the CSS file. And then I have the mobile one second, which means that the mobile one is going to override the desktop one. All right? So the desktop CSS is the full-blown CSS. It's the more involved CSS. And here the mobile version takes the stuff away from it. And it has a media query. And it says, apply this if it's a handheld device or a very tiny screen, a screen that's less than 480 pixels, which would be a very tiny screen. To be consistent, this probably should be 600 pixels, right? Because the other one I did 601. So 600 pixels. All right. So, let's look at this. We'll start out with the desktop version of the CSS. And then we'll look at the mobile version of the CSS. The desktop version says the header has a width of 100%, blah, 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 blah. The nav has a width of 18%, and so on. I... Everything with a class of part as a width of 30%, a minimum width of that, float left. Overflow auto on each of those. And then finally, the image within part one, I'm making visible and 95%. So 
we end up with that, which is roughly the same thing we had in the other version. I don't think I have the background, but you get the idea. We could put a different background in it if we wanted to. make it a little lighter. All right. Now, the second one overrules stuff in the first one. So that the second one, part image has a width of 95%. Here we say part image has a display of none. That makes it invisible. Header has all these rules and has this as a border. Here we say the border is none on the header and the border is none on the nav. Here we said the parts are a, a width of 30%. Here we made the parts a width of 100%. And part two, I'm getting rid of all together. So the thing that has a ID of part two I'm getting rid of all together. So if I look at this, I only get, have this paragraph or this section and not this section. It's not uncommon to have a mobile device have less content <coughs> than a desktop device. Again, remember the situation when you're on a mobile device. You're typically looking up something very quickly in a hurry. You're not necessarily going to be surfing for web surfing for pleasure. You want to find your answer and, uh, and be done with it. You're on the go. All right. So therefore, some things that may be important to some degree might not be critical for a mobile user, and therefore, you might eliminate them. For example, if you were, oh, go ahead. Twitter information. Do you, what does Twitter information normally look like on mobile Probably the same thing. Yeah, wh whatever you think is reasonable for it. I wouldn't think it would be drastically different. If you have links on it, there might be less links on it. Um, typically less and simpler as you move down to mobile from a desktop device. If you think of a news site, for example. Uh, a desktop news site might have on their home page a half dozen of the most important news stories, maybe. Maybe on a mobile version of it, you have one or two. And you can hide the ones of secondary uh, importance and only show the most critical stuff. So everything is simpler with mobile. The presentation is going to be simpler, and the um, content is typically going to be simpler. Now, I change the background. Let's make sure we understand this. When I change the background on the desktop version, it also changed the background on the mobile version. Let's make sure we understand why that is. It is that way because I put the background, the body background, on the desktop CSS. Remember, but Every page gets the desktop CSS, mobile and desktop. Things on a, pages viewed on a mobile device gets the second CSS file. And notice on the CSS file, we do nothing to override that. So therefore, the change that we made on the, on the desktop CSS takes effect on the mobile version of the site as well. How could we make it so that on a mobile site, the, the background color was white again. Specified in the mobile, exactly. So I would have to go body background 
white. And then the desktop would have that. The mobile would be back to that. It's the same notion. It's just moving from different directions. And ideally, you should be able to get the same look going in both directions. In other words, either you start with a simple layout that everyone gets and add stuff in for the desktop, or start with a complicated layout and take away stuff in the mobile version. Either way, you should be able to come up with the exact same look going both directions. All right? And that's what we're going to cover about optimizing your page for mobiles. You can do a lot. There's some designs that simply look good on a desktop and a mobile. All right? And you don't even really have to do much of anything. All right? This is when, and if you have that, you're a lucky person. Right? If you have a simple enough design that looks good on desktop and mobile without any sort of tweaking it, all right, then that's great. All right? This technique is sort of the next level. Well, it's a little too complicated on the desktop version, so we want to pare it down a bit for the mobile. All right? So this is the approach that we would take. There's sort of a different technique that's used if there's a huge difference on what you want to show on the mobile version. Uh, versus the desktop version. And that's where you'd get into writing server-side scripts. Uh, if you ever notice, if you're browsing the web on a mobile device and you go to a certain site, like let's go to eBay on my mobile phone. I lied. Let's go to Amazon on my mobile phone. I also lied. having a hard time finding this. Sometimes when you go to a site on your mobile phone, it actually changes the URL from like URL.com to M.URL.com. And that's an indication that there's something on the web server that directs you to one page or the another. Yes? Something on the there's an app on your phone for a website, would it do that? Oh, that, that's an interesting thing. If there's an app on your phone, that could be done a whole bunch of different ways. There's a very easy uh, ways to take, if you have a website, to take a website that uses HTML5 and turn it into an app. <coughs> so they might be doing that, or they might be doing some other method. So like YouTube, if you pull that up on the phone, again, I'd have to see the inside of the app to know exactly how they do it. Let's bring up YouTube, though. Oh, it brought up the YouTube app for me. Yeah. Here's an example. All right, I went to you I went to youtube.com in my browser. I just typed in youtube.com and I don't know if you can see it, but Notice it actually changed the URL to m.youtube.com. Okay, that is called server-side redirection, where it looks and it decides where you're coming from and sends you to one or two different websites. All right, so that's something different than what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is having the same web pages, just viewed with a different uh, CSS file. All right. Whereas that is having two different versions of the site. And again, it, it, it depends on the difference, depends on how different your page needs to be for the mobile versus the desktop. 
If there are no differences and you have a design that works on both, you might have to not have to do any work and just use the desktop design across multiple platforms. All right. If you want to tweak the design a little bit and have a few differences, you can have two different style sheets like what I described. And finally, if there's such a big difference between the two that you actually want to treat them as though they're two different sites, then you can do have, have a sort of a traffic cop on the server and send some of the stuff in one direction, some of the stuff to the mobile site, some of the stuff to the desktop site. One other thing about media queries before we finish is I put the media queries on the link. You can also use a media query inside a style sheet. And you do that like this. So here, you can include a media query inside your style sheet. Or you can do like I did and have the media query on the link itself. So either you could have two separate style sheets, or you could take one style sheet and just have media queries inside it. The same idea. All right. That's all I had for today. Uh, I'm going to make sure I grab my files to post stuff, then I'll be upstairs to unlock the lab.